Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join this webinar. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Toby Thorne. I am a senior manager in the tax team at James Cooper Creston, and I specialise in VAT. The purpose of this webinar is to provide a practical guide for those involved in partially exempt businesses, highlighting the key processes and principles that need to be adhered to, as well as areas of potential risk where we often see mistakes. So I'm gonna be talking for around half an hour this morning, maybe a bit longer, depending on whether we have any questions. And I am confident that by the end of this webinar, you will have a better understanding of not only what VAT partial exemption is, and will therefore be in a much better position to account for VAT correctly going forward, but also be aware of the areas where the VAT position is not clear and you should be cautious and seek advice if you need to. So next slide, please, Georgia. So here's an overview of what I'll be covering today. And once I've been through all of these, I'll then go through any questions. So please feel free to send these in using the questions bar on your screen. If there are any questions that I don't get around to answering today for any reason, I will pick these up with you directly offline. I'll then end with a final summary of the key points and I'll let you all get on with the rest of your day. And I think it's worth quickly mentioning that I will be going into some of these topics in quite a bit of detail, whereas others, I will only be highlighting certain things for your awareness. And inevitably, there will also be some bits that I won't be able to cover at all today. So if there is anything you want to ask on these on topics that I don't cover, or you think of a question after we finish today, then please feel free to contact me directly. Next slide, please, Georgia. So moving on to the first section then, what is VAT partial exemption? Now, to make sure that we are all on the same page, I'm gonna start with some basic VAT principles, which are fundamental to understanding partial exemption. And this starts with the types of supply. So within the scope of VAT, you have two types of supply being taxable and exempt, with taxable being any supply made in the UK which is not exempt from VAT. So within VAT, you have certain supplies which are specifically exempted, such as financial intermediary services, residential letting, commercial letting without an options tax, education by not-for-profit bodies, medical services, livery, etc. And if those exemptions don't apply, by default, the supply will be taxable. And of those taxable supplies, VAT can be charged at one of three rates, being the standard rate of 20%, the reduced rate of 5%, and the zero rate, which has VAT charged at 0%. Note the distinction here between zero rated and exempt supplies, neither of which have VAT charged, but each impacts the overall VAT position of a business in contrasting ways. So there are also certain transactions that are outside the scope of VAT. Now, this terminology does tend to lead to some confusion and quite understandably, so some of these are genuinely outside the scope of VAT and are excluded from your partial exemption calculations, such as transfers of going concern, HMRC payments, grant income or donations, etc. Whereas some have a place of supply that is outside the UK. However, had the place of supply been in the UK, the supply would have been taxable or exempt. Now, these are still referred to as being outside the scope of UK VAT. However, these are included in the partial exemption calculation. And finally, while we're on the topic of supplies, I thought I would just add in 
the definition of what a partially exempt business is being a business that makes or intends to make both taxable and exempt supplies and incurs VAT on costs which relate to both. Next slide, please, Georgia. So why is this important? Well, firstly, so that you are aware of the importance of charging the correct rate of VAT on sales, which I guess is a given, but also being charged the correct rate of VAT on, on your purchases, which is just fundamental general VAT compliance. But also, and more importantly, for the purposes of this webinar, because the type of supply a business makes has an impact on its ability to recover VAT on its costs. In simple terms, a business only making taxable supplies has no restriction, so they can recover VAT on their costs in full. Whereas a business only making exempt supplies would be fully restricted and they cannot claim any VAT on their costs. And then finally, a partially exempt business, which we already know is a business that makes both taxable and exempt supplies, they will have partial VAT recovery. And that is in that it can recover the input tax on costs directly related to making the taxable supplies, but it can't normally recover VAT on the costs directly related to making its exempt supplies. Next slide, please, Georgia. So that was that was it in simple terms. However, is as is often the way with tax, it's not necessarily that simple when you get into the finer details. So what I'm going to do now is just expand on what I mean what I'm, when I'm referring to taxable supplies and exempt supplies for the purposes of partial exemption. So a business can reclaim the input tax that it, is, it incurs on expenditure, which relates to the following supplies. So being your UK taxable supplies, which we've already covered, your standard, your reduced or your zero. Supplies made outside the UK, which would be taxable if made in the UK. So again, these we've already mentioned being those outside the scope transactions, which had the place of supply been in the UK, they would be taxable. So they're included. And then finally, certain exempt supplies known as specified supplies. So these are a range of supplies made to persons belonging outside the UK that would be either exempt financial finance or insurance supplies if made in the UK, supplies which relate directly to the export of goods to a place outside the UK, or supplies made by intermediaries in relation to these types of supplies. So all three of these supplies carry what is called the right to deduct, in that a business can deduct input tax on directly related costs. Now, for the purposes of this webinar, I'm going to refer to all of these supplies as taxable supplies and the input tax on the related expenditure as taxable input tax. Whereas input tax which relates to UK exempt supplies or supplies that would be exempt if made in the UK other than the specified supplies that I've just mentioned, these cannot be claimed unless below the de minimis limits, which I'll cover in more detail later on. And so for completeness, I will refer to these supplies in this webinar as exempt supplies and the related input tax as exempt input tax. So next slide, please, Georgia. So we now know what a partially exempt business is, the types of supplies they make, and that this can impact their VAT recovery. Now what we need to do is explore how. 
So the next step is allocating your input tax for the relevant period into these three categories, sometimes referred to as pots. So the first pot is input tax that is directly attributable to making taxable supplies. The second pot is input tax directly relating to making exempt supplies. And finally, residual input tax, which we haven't covered yet. And, and this is VAT on purchases used to make both taxable and exempt supplies. That could be because it's used directly to make both taxable and exempt supplies, or because it's an overhead of the business as a whole. And the reason we do this is because the VAT on costs directly attributable to taxable supplies is recoverable in full, whereas the VAT on costs directly relating to exempt supplies is not recoverable. That is, again, unless it's de minimis, but we'll cover this in more detail later on. And then finally, the residual input tax is partially recoverable. So say, for example, you have a property developer that owns and rents out a mix of commercial and residential properties. The commercial properties are opted to tax. So the supply from these is VAT standard rated, which is taxable. Whereas the supply from the residential properties is exempt from VAT. One of the commercial properties needed a new roof and one of the residential properties needed a new front door. The VAT incurred on putting a new roof on the commercial property would be recoverable in full, as this is directly relating to the taxable supply. Whereas the VAT incurred on replacing the front door on the residential property would not be recoverable because this is directly relating to the onward exempt supply. If that same property developer then engages with an accountant to prepare and file their annual accounts, this cost cannot be attributed to either taxable or exempt as it is an overhead of the business. So the VAT charged would be residual input tax and would be partially recoverable. So to go back to my original question of what partial exemption is, for me, it's this, the attribution of input tax. It's understanding the link between the types of supplies that the business is making and the costs it's incurring in making those supplies. And ultimately, determining the proportion of that residual input tax, which is attributable to the taxable supplies and can therefore be claimed from HMRC. Now, we've covered what partial exemption is, and I'm just going to pause a little bit here before we go on to the methods of calculation. And I'm just going to highlight some areas of risk which are areas where we often see mistakes. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on these, otherwise we could be here all morning. But if you do have any further questions relating to anything on this slide, then please feel free to contact me after the webinar. So the first point is recognition, which upon reflection is perhaps not that appropriate for all of you as you're here listening, but anyway, it's on the list. Um, it's a business may not recognise that it's making or intends to make exempt supplies, or perhaps a business may be unfamiliar with the partial exemption rules or mistakenly conclude that its exempt input tax is below the de minimis limit. So claims everything, which is a mistake we see all the time. Next is non-business activities. So for example, an academy school or a charity providing services funded by grants or donations, then two calculations are needed. So firstly, you need to perform a business, non-business apportionment, and then a subsequent partial exemption calculation. 
Or the alternative is that you apply for a special combined method with HMRC, which combines the two calculations into one. Next is that some supplies must be excluded from the standard method calculation, irrespective of whether they are taxable or exempt. And this is because they can be distortive to the calculation. So these are supplies such as uh, exceptional capital items used in the business, like a piece of machinery or a property, reverse charge purchases, bank interest received, grant income or donations, etc. Next is accurately attributing costs, which is really important. And we often see businesses taking an oversimplistic view on this, for example, allocating everything to residual, which can massively restrict their input tax recovery unnecessarily, or perhaps going the other way and putting everything to direct taxable, which is then there's a risk of overclaiming VAT. And finally, blocked input tax. So such things as VAT on cars that are available for private use or client entertaining. This VAT is always non-recoverable and is excluded from the partial exemption calculation. So moving on to the methods of calculation then. So the default method of calculation is known as the standard method which uses income to determine the amount of input tax, which is recoverable. Alternatively, a business can apply for a special method, but this needs approval from HMRC before it can be implemented. Then finally, I thought it I would just mention the annual adjustment here, which is a requirement regardless of which method you use. And we don't need to go into any particular detail about the adjustment itself, as it is simply repeating the same calculation, but using the figures from the full VAT year, being the 12 months ending March, April, or May, depending on which VAT stacker you're on. But that's not to say that, it is, that it's insignificant. It's actually a really important step in the partial exemption process, and it helps smooth out any sort of changes or anomalies throughout the year. So, for example, if you had a business that receives all its exempt income in one quarter, this business may well have overclaimed VAT in the three quarters where there was no exempt income. And what you do is you compare the annual adjustment result to the actual input tax that you have claimed in the year. Any VAT due to be repaid or, or claimed from HMRC can then be input into your Q4 return of that VAT year, so your last quarter or return of that that year, or it can be put into Q1 of the following year, so your first VAT return of the following that year. And so what we're going to do now then is just work our way through an example quarterly partial exemption calculation. And as you can see on the screen, we've got it, the figures split into income and expenditure. So we've got taxable supplies of 155K, total exempt supplies of 65K, a machine used in the business and sold for 25K, and then expenditure. So you've got your direct taxable, your direct exempt, input tax on business entertainment, and residual input tax. And as you've probably spotted, there's a couple of things in there that we need to exclude. So the value of the machine used in the business and sold. So this is an exceptional capital item. So this needs to be excluded completely. And also input tax on business entertainment. So that's blocked input tax, and that also needs to be excluded. So what we're left with is we've got our total taxable supplies our total exempt supplies, and then our three pots of input tax. So if you go to the next slide, please, Georgia. And then of those three pots of input tax, we know that the input tax directly relating to taxable supplies, 
is going to be recoverable in full. We know that the input tax that's related to that directly related to the exempt supplies is going to be irrecoverable. And that and I know that this is a quarterly VAT return. So straight away I can see that those that, that figure is more than the de minimis limit. So we don't need to consider the de minimis limits for this quarterly VAT return, but we'll get into more detail on that later. And then finally, the residual input tax, which is going to be partially recoverable. And really what we're trying to do with this calculation is figure out how much of that 16K we can reclaim from HMRC. So this is, if you go to the next slide, please, Georgia, this is the template of a, of a partial exemption that I use. And firstly, what we're going to need to do is look at the income. So we're going to look at the taxable supplies and we are going to divide that figure by the total supplies in the period. And what we're trying to do here is work out our recovery rate. So as you can see, once you divide that 155,000 by the 220,000, you get 70.45%. And note here that this percentage is always rounded up to the nearest whole percent. So even if that was 70.0001%, you would still round that up to 71%. And so there we've now got our recovery rate of 71%. Next, we need to turn our attention to the expenditure. So as you can see, our three pots are now pulling through into the calculation here. And we know that the direct taxable is going to be recoverable. The direct exempt is going to be irrecoverable. And the residual input tax of 16K is the figure that we need to work out how much of that, that 16K we can reclaim. And we do that by multiplying it by the 71% being the recovery rate that we have worked out. This is going to give us our taxable proportion of the residual input tax. So when we times that 16,000 by the 71%, it gives us 11,360 pounds. So that is the taxable proportion of the residual input tax, and that is going to be recoverable in full. We then also need to work out the exempt proportion. And all we do is take the 16K and we, and we minus the 11,360 that we've worked out as being taxable. And what we're left with is the 4,640. The next step is to then work out what our total taxable input tax is for the period. So we're going to add our direct taxable input tax, add this to the taxable proportion of the residual, and what we're left with is 25,860. And then we also do the same for the exempt to work out our total exempt input tax for the period. So we take our direct exempt input tax, we add it to our exempt proportion of the residual, and we're left with £11,140. And it's this £11,140, this is your partial exemption adjustment that you are going to enter onto your accounting software. This is the amount that you're, you need to restrict your box for and reduce the amount of VAT that is being claimed. So once you do that, you are left with that £25,860. So of the possible £37,000 of input tax, this business is able to reclaim 25,860. So that would be the box four amount on their VAT return in this quarterly VAT return. Now I trust that was all clear. However, if you did have any questions about the calculation, then please do send them in and I will try and answer them towards the end. Moving on to the special method. So a special method is any calculation other than the standard method that enables you to calculate how much of your input tax you can recover. So it must allow you to recover the input tax on your purchases to the extent that you use these purchases to make taxable rather than exempt supplies. And you cannot change your method without HMRC's approval. So that's an absolute given. 
there's a list of examples of allocations and apportionments that you can use. Now, this list is not exhaustive. And if you use any of these, you must make sure that the resulting calculation produces a result that is a true reflection of the use to which the input, the input tax is put. And finally, then, you must calculate the percentage rate using a special method to two decimal places. So there's no rounding up allowed like there was with the standard method. Now, before we move on to the de minimis rules, I thought I would just add in this slide. Again, this is going to be one of those slides where I'm going to be highlighting things for awareness, but not going to be going into any particular detail. So there are a couple of other simplifications available that I haven't mentioned yet. The first is the in-year provisional rate, which allows you to use your previous year's recovery percentage for the following year. And then all you do is complete an annual adjustment using actual figures for that current year. So this removes the need to calculate the recovery rate for each of your quarterly VAT returns. So that, that first part of the quarterly of the uh, partial exemption calculation, but you would still need to attribute the input tax to the three pots. So it's not a massive time saver, but it is a simplification available. The next is for newly partially exempt, but new partially exempt businesses that have no turnover. So these are allowed to use a special method based on intended use without HMRC approval in the first year of registration. Next is the capital goods scheme. So in broad terms, this applies to computer or items of, of computer equipment of 50K or more and land and buildings or civil engineering works, etc of 250k or more and these need to be acquired for use in the business and whereas for most purchases the final level of input tax recovery is determined by the annual adjustment however for these specified assets the level of taxable use must be monitored for up to 5 or 10 years with any variation in the extent of the taxable use would require an adjustment to the initial input tax deduction. So next is subsequent changes of intention. So this is where you may have recovered VAT on costs because the intention was that it was to be used for onward taxable supplies, but instead it was used for onward exempt supplies or vice versa. In these scenarios, a clawback or a payback input tax adjustment might be required. And finally, finally, the standard method override. So this is the standard method, or this is if the standard method produces a substantially different VAT recovery rate when compared to a use-based method. Substantially different being more than 50K, and, is it, and if this is the case, HMRC will make you put an adjustment through the same period as your annual adjustment to repay any overclaimed VAT. So moving on to the de minimis rules then. So where your input, your exempt input tax is insignificant, you can treat it as if it were taxable input tax and recover it in full. So if, if the total value of your exempt input tax in the period is not more than £625 per month on average, which is £1,875 per quarter and £7,500 per year, and is not more than half of your total input tax in the relevant period, so if we were to look at the worked example from before, the de minimis limits 
were exceeded because the exempt input tax in that quarterly fat return exceeded £1,875, being the de minimis limits for this quarterly return. You can go to the next slide, please, Georgia. So as you can see, these are the figures from before. That, ex that, that exempt input tax has exceeded £1,875, so therefore it has failed that first test and therefore the de minimis rules do not apply. However, if we were to divide all of those input tax amounts by 10 to significantly reduce the exempt input tax amounts, we would have a very different situation. So there you can see the figures have now changed. The exempt input tax is now less than £1,875 and it's less than half of the total input tax in the period. Therefore, in this scenario, all the VAT in this period would be recoverable. So there is £3,700 worth of input tax. All of that is recoverable. And if you can go to the next slide, please, Georgia, thanks. So there are then also two simplified tests available for businesses with very small amounts of input tax in the period. And what these do is it avoids the need to complete a full parcel exemption calculation. There is also the option of an annual de minimis test. This allows a business that was de minimis in its previous, previous partial exemption year to treat itself as if it was de minimis in its current partial exemption year. This means it can provisionally recover input tax relating to exempt supplies in each of its VAT periods, saving the need to do partial exemption calculations. However, we would only suggest doing this if you are absolutely certain of being de minimis in the current year. Otherwise, you would end up having a substantial amount of VAT being due back to HMRC if you had been recovering exempt input tax and ended up not being de minimis when you performed your annual adjustment. So there is no de minimis limit for non-business. So VAT on costs used exclusively for non-business purposes is not input tax and you cannot recover it. And finally then for VAT groups, the £625 per month on average applies to the whole VAT group, not per member. So they only get one limit for the whole VAT group. On to the final slide then. And now that making tax digital for VAT is compulsory, I thought I would include a quick slide on this as it now applies to all partially exempt businesses that are VAT registered. So you must record your partial exemption adjustment in your functional compatible software. However, only the total adjustment is required to be kept in the software. So if the adjustment requires a calculation, the calculation does not need to be performed in the software. And if the calculation is completed outside of the software, digital links are not required for any information used in the calculation. So performing your partial exemption calculation in an Excel spreadsheet and then manually adjusting your compatible software such as Xero, QuickBooks or Sage is still compliant for NTD purposes. Now, I appreciate that was quite a lot of information in a relatively short space of time. So thank you for sticking with me. There is now an opportunity for questions. So if you've not already done so, please do send them in. And I appreciate we're, we're going a little bit long here. So if there aren't many, we'll perhaps just move on to the recap. But I'll give you a little bit of time to put in some questions if you've got any. No, I must have answered everything then. Well, as I said before, if you've, if you've got any questions after today, then please feel free to contact me directly. And to finish off then, I'm just gonna do a quick recap of the key points and processes that we've covered today.
Firstly, is recognition. So recognising that you are partially exempt and that a partial exemption calculation needs to be performed. Next, it's being aware of what supplies are classed as taxable supplies and what supplies are classed as exempt supplies for the purposes of partial exemption, i.e. which supplies have the right to deduct input tax and which do not. So next is the attribution of costs. So again, really important to accurately attribute the input tax, so to direct taxable, direct exempt and residual. Next is performing the partial exemption adjustment using your relevant method for the relevant period. Checking if the de minimis rules apply. And then performing an annual adjustment for each VAT year end. And that's it for this webinar on VAT partial exemption. If you have any questions about the topics I've covered today or anything VAT related for that matter, please do not hesitate to get in touch. My contact details are on the screen now. There are also other webinars in the pipeline, so do keep an eye out for these. Thank you all for listening and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.